This is part one of the lecture on driven motion. In this lecture, we shall examine mechanical vibrations that are driven by some force. We will consider both damped and undamped driven motion. First, let's watch a video on the dramatic collapse of a bridge as a way to motivate this lecture. This took place in the United States in 1940. Tacoma Bridge, Washington, opened only a few months ago, was built at a cost of over six million dollars. But misfortune overtakes the great structure. These are some of the most amazing pictures ever recorded by a newsreel. The actual collapse of the world's third largest suspension bridge. Only at 35 mile an hour wind is blowing, but this apparently sets up a rhythmic swinging of the bridge, which increases with each swing. Finally, the swinging road and the suspension cables give way and plunge into the water below. Fortunately, the only casualties were a car stalled on the bridge and a dog. Many people think that a phenomenon known as resonance is responsible for the collapse of the bridge. Resonance is also what we will study in this lecture. Now, consider the second order uh, linear differential equations with constant coefficients. Here, a, b and c are constants. We have discussed this earlier. We know how to find x the unknown, which is the response function, with a given input function f. Now we have considered how this was used in modeling free vibrations, both with and without damping. Free because the input function was zero. That is, there is no force driving the motion of the mass, and the mass involved is free to move or oscillate without any external force. Now let us consider the case when f is not zero, that is, an external force acts on the spring mass dashboard system. So that what we have is called a driven motion with damping. Here's a picture showing the driving force, that means the support in this case in no, is no longer fixed, but it moves the entire spring mass dashboard system. In other words, the mass may be set in motion or continue to be in motion due to the driving force. Let us look at an example of such a system in example 5.3. We are told that a mass is initially released from rest at a distance of 2 units from the equilibrium. What does this tell us about the initial conditions? You may wish to think about it first. Now, x at 0 is equal to 2, and x prime at 0 is also 0. In other words, x prime here is dx dt, and at t equals, t, t equals to 0, x prime is 0. Or, we can simply write x prime at 0 equals to 0. Here is how we can work out this problem. We note that in this case a spring mass dashboard system is driven by a certain oscillating force. Now as shown in this diagram here, we have now an oscillating force given by 10 cos 40. Note that this force 10 cos 40 is periodic. So we expect that the support for the spring is being moved up and down. 
Now, we are also told that the mass is initially released from rest. So x prime at 0 is equal to 0. At the same time, it is released from a distance of 2 units from its equilibrium. So x at 0 is equal to 2. Now, if we look at the associated homogeneous differential equation given by x double prime plus 4x prime plus 8x equals to 0, we can write down the auxiliary equation given which is uh, m square plus 4m plus 8 equals to 0 and easily work out the roots of this equation. In this case, we found that the root of roots of the equation are negative 2 plus 2i and negative 2 minus 2i. In other words, the alpha is negative 2 and beta is 2. So we can write down the complementary function as xc equals to e to the negative 2t into c1 cos 2t plus c2 sin 2t. Next, we want to find out a uh, we want to find a, a particular solution. In this case, we look at the right hand side which is 10 cos 40 and for a particular solution, we try xp equals to a cos 40 plus b sin 40. We can then find the first and second derivatives of xp with respect to t and then substitute these uh, derivatives into the equation to find a and b. Doing so, we have uh, this uh, expression here is a little bit long, but it's possible then to equate like terms after expansion, like terms from the left hand side and the right hand side, and eventually we can work out the values for A and B. So in this case, we find that uh, A will have to be negative one quarter and B is a half. So we can then write down the particular solution xp as negative one quarter cos 40 plus a half sine 40. Now that we have obtained both xc and xp, we can write down the general solution for this uh, problem which is e to the negative 2t into c1 cos 2t plus c2 sine 2t which is the complementary function xc and the particular solution minus one quarter uh, cos 40 plus a half sine 40. So here, this being the general solution, it has the two co coefficients c1 and c2 which we can find by applying the initial conditions. Earlier on, we have already established that the in initial conditions are x at 0 equals to 2 and x prime at 0 equals to 0. So using these uh, initial conditions, we can uh, substitute t equals to 0 into x and x prime to find the unknowns c1 and c2. In this case, working out the values of c1 and c2, we find that c1 is equal to 9 over 4 and c2 is 5 over 4. So in other words, we have found the solution to this problem and we note that it consists of a, a portion which has a negative exponential attached to it and another portion which has a cosine 40 and a sine 40. Now if we sketch the graph of the solution, um, this is how uh, the graph will look like and it turns out that um, the first part of the graph, uh, because of the negative exponential, it comes down and it, it eventually dies off. Whereas the second part uh, seems to be of some kind of oscillation uh, that goes on uh, forever. In other words, as t tends to infinity, from the equation, from the solution alone, we know that x will tends towards only the second part, which is the negative one quarter cos 40 plus a half sine 40.